Secret Modifications custom built and luxury cars did the trick for this large narco ring, specializing in moving cargo far and wide. They had a fleet of tricked out cars, loaned to runners by the bosses. And they weren't just moving cocaine, they were stockpiling a trendy synthetic drug on a Mediterranean island for an expected flood of tourists flocking to its famed nightclubs when pandemic restrictions lifted. The mob reporter here with news of a series of arrests and seizures announced this week in Spain, tackling a sophisticated ring of narcos, described by investigators as one of the most active and wide-ranging in the country, who used clever hiding spots to move bricks of cocaine, kilos of meth, and also some of this. Let me tell you about it. Regular viewers of my channel, more of whom should get around to actually subscribing by the way, will know that I love exploring car traps. They're the special compartments built in cars, trucks, and even boats, usually used to stash contraband. Some are super sophisticated, mobile works of automotive art. They require a combination to unlock the hydraulics, but unlike regular locks, these combinations are sequences of car controls, such as holding down the brake pedal while the door is open, and then turning on the windshield wipers and the radio, for example. Others are simpler. Some are outright brutish. But they can all be effective to keep loads hidden from prying eyes, especially if the person looking isn't sure what to look for, or that they're supposed to be looking there at all. And that's the downfall. In this case announced last week, a four-month probe by two federal police agencies in Spain unraveled the tricks of their trade and, allegedly, the people behind them. Here is a Spanish police officer showing how one of the traps they found in this probe is released. In this case, the trap was built under the passenger car seat. The organization supplied a fleet of custom trap cars for members to use in their smuggling. The suspects formed a network of connected parts, from the coastal area receiving drugs from South America to a matrix of distribution nodes across the country. It's like the Narcos version of Amazon's model. The network featured a chain of specialists, the skilled smugglers along the Galician coast receiving the product from overseas, a businessman in the hospitality sector in the neighboring region of Asterias, and logistics experts supervising transport around the country. One of the bosses was allegedly caught on a wiretap boasting of the network's professionalism. Sixteen people were arrested in several provinces of Spain, from the capital, Madrid, to Mediterranean ports and Atlantic ports, and the south-central city of Jaén, said to be the world's largest producer of olive oil, which many locals refer to as liquid gold. Some have apparently found another commodity to work with. The investigation also focused on the storied island of Ibiza. Police say their investigation was complex because of the vast geography the narcos were traveling, their criminal specializations, and their fleet of custom cars. They used scout cars as well, with someone driving ahead of the trap car looking for police checks, speed traps, or anything else that might interfere with the trip. They communicated with each other using encrypted messaging apps. Investigators say the police probe unfolded in three phases. In May, 50 kilos of cocaine were found in a car trap under a hidden false bottom of a sedan. In another trap, they found 370,000 euros, which is about 440,000 US dollars. Four people were arrested then. From there, officers raided four properties in Madrid and near the port of Valencia, seizing several high-end cars, encrypted electronic devices, more cash, and documents that helped investigators piece together the working parts of the criminal structure. The second phase came a few weeks later, with 11 raids and 5 more arrests, including on the Spanish island of Ibiza. It's an island that's become an electronic dance music mecca. It's famous for its dance clubs, all-night raves, DJs, and music festivals. Young tourists flock to the island for the nightclubs, and along with the tasty beats, many are hungry for club drugs. Police say the criminal network ramped up activity during Spain's pandemic lockdown, devising new methods to avert scrutiny and avoid detection 
so they could stockpile product on Ibiza for when travel restrictions were lifted to feed pent-up demand for an expected summer flood of clubbers. The probe was called Operation Cult. The only reason I can see is from the cult-like fervor of some of the hardcore ravers. But in any event, in this phase of the operation, five vehicles used as trap cars were seized, along with 1.3 kilos of cocaine, more cash, and mobile phones. The third and most interesting phase came at the end of June. 15 kilos of coke were found in a false bottom car trap, and during two more raids in Madrid and Valencia came three more arrests. And that's when they found this stuff. Along with 40 more kilos of coke, two kilos of meth, police say they seized 500 grams of pink cocaine. They call it pink cocaine, but it isn't cocaine at all. That's largely just a marketing ploy, as it's often found in a similar powdered form. And it isn't a new drug, but it remains on the fringe with periodic bursts of popularity, within circles of those who can afford it. It's now experiencing a new round of interest. In its original form, it was a creation of the famed pharmacologist-chemist Alexander Shulgin in the 1970s, who synthesized what he called 2CB for the two carbon atoms between the benzene ring and its chemical structure. His formulation's name gave it more accurate street nicknames, such as 2C or 2CB. Its recent resurgence is attributed to this man, Alejandro Arbolero Aribe. Alejandro grew rich popularizing the pink powder. The Colombian press dubbed him the Pablo Escobar of synthetic drugs when he was arrested there in 2016. Previous high points, so to speak, were when 2CB was found hidden in Christian artifacts being shipped from Colombia to the United States. In 2018, a large amount was found imbued in the heavy pink paint used on a large portrait of the Virgin Mary, being shipped from Bogota to New York City. Police said that a highly religious border guard at El Dorado Airport was captivated by the painting and stared at it in adoration, and then touched it when he was saying goodbye to his saint, only to disturb a trickle of pink powder from the canvas. In 2019, 2CB was found stashed in a Bible being shipped from Cali to Miami. When it was being examined, an officer noticed traces of pink dust. Using a scalpel, the leather binding of the cover was removed to reveal the hidden content. That's a narco Bible, I guess. I'm told that most of what is sold today as pink cocaine is pretend versions of 2CB, mixing other synthetics with amphetamines or caffeine and pink dye as a marketing ploy. But I don't know what variation was in play in this operation using the car traps. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.